items, and you can get to the next station and get a new build. John Hamels, good morning. Doc, he's on the air. Good morning, Reed, and welcome and hello from Florida. What's in Florida besides well, heat? Today, <laughs> it's a beautiful day here. It's been like in the mid-80s along the coast. I feel oh. like the weatherman, don't I? <laughs> yeah, well, you know it was 80, uh, in the 80s here yesterday. That's what I heard. Where's yeah. Today going to be? <laughs> We're getting some Florida weather right up here, so. I'm sending it your way. Well, yeah. So what's new with you? Well, things are all in, in process uh, for our son's wedding uh -huh. this afternoon, and then uh, we'll be heading home tomorrow. And uh, we've been enjoying a nice vacation here in Cocoa Beach for the past week and uh, went to Disney World and did all kinds of fun yeah, things. Yeah, I see Pluto there. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> there's my, there's, that's Goofy, actually. Oh, that's Goofy. Okay. <laughs> See, I don't know much about Disney. <laughs> well, tell me, uh, is this going to be a, a, one of your monster weddings, or is it going to be a nice, quiet little affair? Uh, I think we're looking at maybe under 100 people. but Under 100? I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in control of this one. Uh, but, uh, last year's was a bit... Was these, a, you know, out-of-control weddings, that's what's happening these days, and especially when you, you, you pick off a banquet hall or something at, at say, 50 bucks a clip. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hey, Reed, did you happen to mention today that is today is the annual Rotary Auction and Barbecue? Did you mention that yet? I have not mentioned it today. This is the uh, fifth now, today, right? Today's the day. Today's the day. Will, if they don't have their tickets yet, they can buy them at the door at the uh, the exempt fireman's hall in Westfield. Okay. That's where that, that's where they're holding it. It's the exempt hall, right? Exactly. And uh, in Westfield. Ten dollars a person. You get to barbecue chicken dinners from beer to soft drinks, right to dessert. Uh, all the beer you can drink, right? Oh, that's right. Uh, all yeah. the beer you can get away with and still drive. <laughs> <laughs> or have somebody else do it, hopefully. Yeah, I, have, uh, I, I hope people have some uh, drivers there. You have an opportunity to win five hundred dollars, <laughs> and if, and then hopefully there's the silent auction and the live auction with Dave Brown. It'll be a great evening if the weather's nice. What a great night to come out and hey. have a bunch of fun, right? It's a gala day. That's two in a row because next uh, Sunday on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have a big uh, affair for those kids that were uh, hit by the train in Westfield. Oh, that's right, the Reed family to help yeah, out with that. their expenses. The families are horrific expenses. Well, you know? we're going to have to cover that next week and let people know all the details, huh? Okay, we'll do. Okay, okay. well, listen, I'll see you real soon. And okay. uh, have a good week, and uh, have a good show. We'll talk okay, to you. you'll, be, you'll be here in person next time, huh? I'll be in the flesh. <laughs> okay, dokie. That's how we say it. Back see, to you, Reed. See you later, alligator. Bye-bye. After a while, crocodile. Uh, next meeting of the Mayville Seniors will be on May 17th. <laughs> i got to get that in quick. <laughs> you know, like most senior groups, you bring your own table service, and you have an opportunity to have a meal. Usually the uh, part of it is provided by the club, and you bring a dish to pass or salad or dessert or whatever hey you can't go wrong okay we have a guy here he, he's been here many a time god bless you for giving up your saturday mornings dave foley he's our district attorney he, uh, he comes on the air he's here to answer any questions the public may have and uh, he realizes that the program actually shows all week long and several times a day <laughs> and most of you will be on later so don't bother calling in this is the live show and it's Saturday morning, 9 to 10, and you're on the air, Dave. What's new with you? Well, we just continue to plug along, attempting to, uh, you know, be mindful of the needs of the residents of Chautauqua County, making sure that we hold those responsible for committing crime responsible for doing that. Well, you must know your way around. Uh, you're a, you're a third-generation attorney now. I am. Uh, your grandfather, uh, uh, Albert J. Foley, and your father, Albert W. Foley, and your name is Albert C. Foley, right? <laughs> no, no. I, I, my brother's Albert, but I, I'm David. I, You're I, Dave. I'm you, David. You missed right. out on the Albert. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and you, like I, uh, have uh, done uh, uh, almost a round trip at Fredonia State University. You went there originally. I did. And you teach there now, right? I do. I, I just started this semester teaching uh -huh. a criminal procedure class, which a, I, I thoroughly enjoy. Uh -huh. It's a great store. It's a it's a great school. Um, there, uh, and you know it's growing, but like weeds. But unfortunately, the uh, tuition is rising sharply. You know, it used to be free. When I went to Fredonia, I was on the school senate and uh, editor of the paper and everything. And Rockefeller, no new taxes, himself, slipped through a little tiny tuition. It was free. It was free. It was land-grant university. The whole SUNY was, really. And uh, 
the, uh, it was for the poor students or the middle class students who didn't have money to go to Harvard at 30,000 a clip today. <clears throat> and so uh, he slipped in just a $50 tuition fee. We raised a rumpus about that. So that's the camel's foot in the door, you know, the nose in the door. Sure, what is it now, 5,000 something? I think it's somewhere around five or $7,000 yeah, a it's, year it's, right it's, now. It's just elephantine. Yeah, but yeah. in compared to private schools, it's still very affordable. It's uh, quite affordable, especially if you're cool about it. You go to the even cheaper community college. You go down to JCC, take your two years, then you come you finish transfer up. over. That's yeah, correct. Transfer a lot of, I think a lot of uh, students are doing that now. Yeah, well, it's the, the economy is uh, rough on students. Uh, gee. And of course the Pell Grants and all these other grants have been cut back sharply and uh, the student loans have been cut back sharply. They're trying to tell, we want to save you a couple of dollars worth of interest amounts to about $7 a month to the kids. That's a big deal. But they cut back on the number of grants. They have. Uh, loans so that uh, the kids, it's harder and harder for the kids to even get a loan today. Well, and it's even, I, I see often that kids are having a very difficult time paying the loans back. I mean, they can't get jobs. They're out there, you read an awful lot about their, their inability to pay back loans. So I think it's a tough time to be coming out of college for a, for yeah, a young, especially young for person. jobs, right? Yeah, not many jobs. Right. Uh, people either taking jobs that uh, are under uh, the level that they're qualified for. It's it's a difficult time for young people uh, in the United States. Yeah, and it looks like uh, the student loans are the government's answer to education. They keep telling us we need higher education, so they make it harder and harder for kids to get a higher education. And as, well, you can borrow money, and so the kids are now in hock for up to hundred grand a piece. You know. 50 grand, 25 grand, they come out with these horrendous uh, loans that they're uh, supposed to pay back. And if you can't even get a job, how do you pay them back? <laughs> That's correct. I mean, I, it's, it's very difficult. But I, I have to say that I've really very much enjoyed teaching at Fordonia State this semester. What do you teach? Uh, you, you said that you gave the name of it, but what it's is it? It's a criminal procedure class. It's actually a constitutional law class. It's Fourth, uh -huh. Fifth, Sixth Amendment, Eighth Amendment, you know, the things that I deal with on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the police. So it's something that's familiar to me. Yeah. And, and Fifth I, Amendment, they tell me, is pretty well shot through the holes by now. Well, I mean, you know, it's, I don't, I, I believe in the amendments. I believe in well, the protections that they provide. Them, and, and it's Congress is shooting and shredding them, really. Well, I mean, in New York State, <laughs> yeah. I think we still protect individual liberties, and, I, and, and uh -huh. I'm very mindful of that. I tell my students when I, when I uh -huh. speak to them about this, I mean, my reason for upholding the Constitution is twofold. Number one, I believe in its protections. Uh, number two, as a part of my job as district attorney, I believe that I need to work with the police to make sure that we don't violate people's constitutional rights so that we actually get prosecutable cases. And, and that's, that's really what my, one of my primary functions is as the DA. Yeah. Well, how about the, you know, the, recently that cop, uh, the cops charged into a guy's house, broke in while he was there and shot him dead. That looks like some kind of a violation of, of constitutional rights, if nothing else. Yeah, well, you certainly have, have some issues when, when, when police go beyond what, what they're entitled to do. Thank goodness it wasn't here. Yeah, right. You would have been in hot water, I think, yeah. as yeah. is everybody else, because they immediately cleared him. Of course, the district attorney, they tell me, has total control of the grand jury. He can indict a... Well, as they say, a cheeseburger, right? Ham sandwich. <laughs> ham, I, ham, sandwich. ham sandwich, I believe. I, now, I, I don't believe that either, but uh, <laughs> I think grand jury is a very important function in our, in our system. I think that they sometimes will weed out cases that, that don't deserve to be prosecuted, and mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, the, the burden in grand jury is less than it is at trial. So yeah. you just need reasonable cause uh, to believe that yeah. a felony was committed. Somehow it reminds me of that uh, cop that shot a kid dead on the, uh, on the, the uh, trail mobile or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, back Back in a few years ago, here in Chicago, put four slugs into his back or something, as I recall. Yes, he he he. And he uh, yelled out, "I got him!" Uh, that we were after uh, what's his name. Uh, well, none of none of the evidence seemed to bear that out. Oh I, yeah. I, no, we we listened to the tapes and the phone calls and, uh -huh. and didn't didn't. Uh, his, Bucky, Bucky Bucky Phillips, but right. uh, <laughs> there there was nothing there. I mean, that was a truly tragic and unfortunate it was horrible. situation. Horrible. Uh, Silver Creek kid dropped, killed dead. But we did what we needed to do in that case. We took mm -hmm. it to grand jury. We spent three days in grand jury presenting all the evidence and. Mm -hmm. and and the grand jury makes their decision. I mean, that's what their role is, and that's what their obligation yeah. is. Cut him loose. Um, whatever happened to Bucky? Where is he now? He's still in jail, I assume. Uh, Ralph Bucky Phillips is in uh, Dannemore. It's uh, uh, up in northeastern New York State. It's uh -huh. a it's a special housing unit. It's high high security. I believe he mm -hmm. sits in a cell for 23 hours a day, and then is let out uh, in his own private area for one hour during the day uh, for exercise. Kind of dreary, huh? I, I think he shot, so he shot a couple of cops, didn't he? 
Uh, three, three, killing one. Uh, he, yeah. he shot one in Shemong, a state trooper there, and he, and he shot uh, two here in Chautauqua County. Well, you had a real search for that guy. It turned the county upside down. Uh, all summer. It all was summer, uh, yeah. all summer long, 2006. I remember I was up near uh, Casa Vega, and uh, there was a stop there, and they pulled my car over. And the police officer came to the window and said, I want to search your trunk. And I said, well, do you have a search warrant? And he said, I don't need one. I said, wait a minute. The Constitution right. protects me. You have to have a search warrant. Right. And, or, uh, or, re or at least reasonable cause. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, he said, well, I just want to look for Bucky. And I said, well, what if you found some other person in there dead? He said, I wouldn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly would be problematic if he did. <laughs> yeah. So at any rate, I did let him look at my spare tire. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, that was, a, that was a, a, an awful summer, I think, for the residents of Chautauqua County. Well, it was, it was you know, very inconvenient. It was an unfortunate, unfortunate situation. Yeah. Well, at least you found him eventually. Yeah, and we were able to get a plea. He pled to the, uh, the, the murder of the state trooper and the attempted uh -huh. murder of the other, and he's serving a, a life without parole. He's yeah. attempted, though. You know, they, they've disciplined him rather severely since he's, I guess he took a sweatshirt and stuffed it and made it look like a human being. I think they believe he was attempting to get out again. Yeah, well, he did get out the first time. He escaped. He did, uh, <laughs> and, and I think he had a history of that, even back into his, oh, his yeah. youth of, mm -hmm. of attempting to well, escape. Well, you had some exciting times here, especially with uh, uh, Williams. Remember him? Oh, yeah, Nushan. Nushan Williams mm -hmm. ran around uh, impregnating with HIV and knew it. Uh, a lot of little girls, and boy. That was one of your first cases, wasn't that, it? Actually, that was Jim Subject. Oh, Jim Subject. Yeah, Jim, that, Jim handled that case. Uh, yeah. We have had some dealings with him since because they had to do, they were actually, New York yeah. State was coming in to see whether or not he would fit under the civil confinement. That's handled through the New York State Attorney's Office. So what, what was the upshot of that? The, the civil confinement means they can keep him on pass a sentence because he's too threatening to everybody. That's right. I, I, I'm not, I don't believe that they've concluded that yet, so we're not sure whether or not they're going to continue to house him after he's served his jail sentence, which yeah. they can under that law. Well, he's proven himself a very uh, dangerous person because anybody who has HIV is running around uh, having, let's see, unsafe sex. Yeah, no question. I mean, no gee question. whiz, that can be a horror story. Oh. And anybody it touches is going to well, end up wind up with AIDS. Right. Um, no, but we've been very busy. I mean, we're still. We we just held a trial this past January. We convicted an individual by the name of Corey Kimmy. He attempted to kidnap a 12-year-old girl, uh, pulled her off her bicycle as she was riding it to school in Fredonia. Oh, really? Uh, we had about a two-week trial on that, and they convicted him of attempted kidnapping, and he's gone off for uh, 15 years in state prison. Well, so you're still seeing these types of things going on in the county. We're the same as anywhere else, which just may be in a smaller number. Yeah, I noticed in, your, uh, in the paper this morning, uh, you were a, a top scout now. Tell us about that. Well, I I've, uh, have, was asked by the, the Boy Scouts to be their honoree this year. It's, it's a, a, a scout section that represents several counties in northern Pennsylvania and western New York. Uh, and I've, I've been named their honoree for 2012. We're going to have a fundraiser and a golf tournament this spring, and hopefully we're going to be able to raise some funds for the Boy Scouts. Great. Do you play golf? Uh, I do play golf. Uh, it's, it's suffered a little bit, my game, since becoming the DA. I don't have the time that I had uh, before to play as often, but I, I enjoy getting out. Yeah, well, you can put that little cup thing on your carpet in your office, you know, get the putting down. You know, you, well, you, you know, drive for show and you, you putt for no. dough. That's right, that's right. <laughs> We're talking to uh, Dave uh, Foley. He's our district attorney here in Chautauqua County for a number of years now. Um, Jim Subject actually appointed you originally, didn't he? Uh, he, he resigned from office uh, mm -hmm. before his term was up during his last year, and I actually received the appointment in July of 2005 from Governor Pataki mm -hmm. to fill out the remainder of his term and then was elected in November of 2005 mm -hmm. for my first term beginning in January of 2006. Yeah. Do you have a private practice? Uh, I, I'm not allowed to anymore. The, the DA position is full-time. Prior to that, I was in with my father and what was my grandfather's firm in Dunkirk, Foley, Foley, mm -hmm. and Pasifero. Okay, so then you had to you had to quit the law practice, uh, uh, private practice, and you're now a public lawyer. <laughs> I, I'm now a full-time public lawyer. Well, now as mentioned, Dave, we're going to we're we're faced with a huge budget deficit this year, at the uh, county level. Um, we don't even know where they're going to get the money to fill this gap, 
uh, if they pass any local real estate taxes, uh, it looks like uh, more and more houses will go up for sale. Well, seniors particularly are losing their houses, uh, living in their children's basements. And